Hi everyone, Jim here. I recently bought a saw stop table saw. Let me tell you why. So if you've never heard of a saw stop table saw, it's a high-end table saw that has a really unique safety feature. Uh, it uses a microprocessor and sends a current through the blade that detects any type of capacitance change. So anything conductive that hits the blade will activate a brake. So if you run metal through it, or more importantly, your finger, the brake will be activated and it'll drop the blade below the table. Um, it does all this within about three milliseconds, so it's about 10 times faster than the airbag in your car. Um, that can be the difference between losing a finger and getting a couple of stitches. Uh, for me, I do computer programming as my primary business, so I need my fingers, and that's why I started looking at this saw. If you'd like to see examples of how the braking system in this table saw works, there's a guy named John Katz Moses who has a YouTube channel, and he has a high-speed camera and did a number of activations using a hot dog and really did some cool things. So you can see in slow motion exactly how the braking system goes into the blade and uses the angular momentum of the blade to drop it below the table. Uh, he does a whole bunch of activations on his YouTube video and it's really cool to watch even if you're not into woodworking just from a tech standpoint. On John's page you can also buy one of these cool aprons and they even come in kids sizes so I got one for my granddaughter she absolutely loves it she likes to play in the shop with us um, just kind of cool. We'll say I'm not much of a woodworker. Uh, a lot of what we use a table saw in our business is modifying trailers or repairing trailers and doing all sorts of things for the lawn care job business. Um, but we did start redoing our basement shop over the winter and started using the table saw more and more. And I had a Bosch uh, job site saw that folded up. It didn't take up a lot of room, which was the main reason I had it. Um, but it was my least favorite tool to use because it would bind off and, and kick back. It just wasn't a tool that I really was comfortable using. I just always felt like something was gonna go wrong no matter how safe I tried to be. Um, so I started looking at the saw stop. I'd heard about it years ago. Um, my son and I went out to Rockler, which had all of their models in stock, and we were originally looking at the job site saw. Now the job site saw was pretty much exactly like my Bosch, except that it had the safety feature where it would drop the blade. Um, it had a few other cool features too. It was about twice the cost of the Bosch saw that I had. So I think I paid about $700 for the Bosch, and it was about $1,400 for the job site version of the saw stop. And when we were there, we started looking at some of the other models. So the next model up from the job site saw was the contractor saw. Um, and the whole reason that I had the job site saw was just because it used up less room. Uh, I didn't actually take it anywhere. So being portable and having wheels didn't actually add any value. So the contractor saw looked kind of inviting uh, since I wasn't going to move it around and you could get a mobile base to roll it. The one thing that we discovered though was that because the contractor saw has the motor on the outside, it was actually wider than the bigger saw. So when we started looking at measuring space and things like that, then we started looking at the cabinet saw. Now the cabinet saw, the one I purchased here is the 1.75 horsepower. So this is the bottom of the line uh, saw in the cabinet saw area, but with all the attachments, it was about $3,000. It's a lot of money for the amount of use that we are gonna put it through, but the idea of losing a finger while fixing a trailer, uh, $3,000 doesn't seem that bad. Um, and while we were remodeling our shop, we started planning building some more cabinets and building like a French cleat system to hold the mowers and, and the blowers and weed whips and stuff. So we started really thinking that we would use a table saw more, and that's where I really thought it was time to buy one. Um, it took me a few months to really decide on it. And, uh, we were able to sell the Bosch and sell some other uh, items out of our shop and we were able to justify purchasing this. So before we headed out and actually bought this thing, I thought I'd look at some of the reviews online. When I logged into the woodworking forums, most of the negative comments I found were of people who, didn't, number one, didn't have the saw and didn't think that it was necessary. They didn't think that the safety features were worth the money and you know they would make comments like, if you would just learn to use the saw properly, you don't have to worry about losing your fingers. Um, that's a nice thing if you're a professional, I guess, but I, I know for me, I, I do stupid things all the time. I don't mean to do them, but you know, you're in a rush, you're tired, whatever, this thing protects you from yourself. Um, the other thing is like all of the positive comments I saw 
were from people who actually owned the saw stop. I never found one comment from somebody who owned one that was negative. Um, everybody said the safety features were wonderful, and on top of that, it's an awesome saw. It's an extremely high quality saw, and the safety features are just an added bonus. So, you know, when I went and bought it, that was what I looked at. One of the other complaints that I heard about the saw stop was that it has false activations. Uh, what that means is that if you have something conductive in your wood, or if the wood's wet, uh, like a pressure treated piece of wood, uh, that it can cause this to activate the braking system, which will require you to get a new brake and also usually require a new blade. If you have a more expensive blade, you might be able to get it repaired, but it still could cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, the, again, it was one of those things that I only saw people who didn't have a saw stop complaining about it. I saw several people who had saw stops who had had one of these false activations. Um, but they weren't real concerned about it. It didn't happen very often. I've seen a number of YouTube videos where they tried to recreate it, where they would soak wood and water overnight, and it still didn't activate. So it's not a real common occurrence, and you can bypass the safety system. So if you know you've got a piece of wet wood, or you're worried that there might be some metal or something conductive in the piece of wood you're cutting, you can turn off the safety system and you can test it even beforehand. So I don't think it's a real problem, but it is something that can happen. And you know, still a couple hundred dollars is a couple hundred dollars, but for me, uh, having that safety feature is well worth the risk of losing a, you know, a blade and a brake every now and then. Um, so far I have had no issues and I don't really anticipate it. Most of the wood that I cut is dry plywood and construction lumber. So um, very seldom do I do anything pressure treated. And if I did, I'd just bypass it. So my son and I went to Rockler with one of the landscape trailers and we picked this thing up and brought it home. Uh, it came in several boxes, extremely heavy. I mean, this is all cast iron. Uh, when we got it home, it took three of us to get just this base piece into the basement. Uh, it was kind of nerve wracking getting it down the basement stairs. Uh, it would be really hard to get this out again. Um, assembly took a good part of a day. The instructions were incredible. They were really laid out. Um, everything was color coded, all the bolts and stuff like that. But there were a lot of pieces to put together and a lot of you know, leveling of pieces and making sure that making sure that the fence is square to the table and that the rails are square. Um, just a lot of fine tuning that you have to do. So here's the manual uh, that came with it, and this has all the assemb assembly instructions. Um, everything's color coding. It shows you where all the parts are in the packet. And here's all the wiring information, how to use it, how to set it up. Uh, just a really nice spiral bound notebook that'll lay flat. Really cool. In all the reviews I saw of people putting one of these together, everybody commented how great this manual is. And I have to agree, it, they did a really good job. Uh, but once you get this set up, it was just awesome to cut on. When I, started, when I tried using this for the first time, I realized I had never actually used a nice table saw in my life. They'd always been job site saws or small saws. Uh, this thing was just beautiful to cut with. I started ripping down two by fours for a small project for building uh, cabinets for my power tools. And I'd never thought of cutting two by fours into three quarter inch strips before because they were too long for the job site saw. On here, they just went straight through. Um, it was almost a zen experience cutting on this saw. And the more I used this saw, the more I started thinking, hey, we could do more projects on here, um, a lot more things that we would build rather than buy as we increase the shop space in the basement and upstairs um, for the lawn care stuff. And one of the cool features with this saw is that it does have a really nice mobile base. Um, you can jack this up and move it around really easily with one person. So even though it's not a contractor saw or a job site saw, I can take this and just slide it out of the way. Um, lately, I've been just staying, staying in this spot in the basement, but I can turn it around and do things for different size stock. 
So uh, the mobile base is really cool. The 36 inch fence was an upgrade. Uh, the default base model comes with a 30 inch, uh, but it doesn't, with the 30 inch, you don't get the nice T fence. You get a, a lower end fence. So for a slight upgrade in price, getting the extra six inches on the end and the nice T fence, um, I think was really worth it. So if you ask me, do I think it's worth it? If you've got the money to buy one, yes. If you don't, there are cheaper options. I definitely like the cast iron top. If you don't need a lot of mobility, um, this really makes a difference, makes it much more solid to cut on and totally different than using a job site saw or a small saw. Uh, but you can definitely use one of those and especially if you mount it in a table, you're gonna get the same kind of thing. At this point in my life, I don't wanna risk my fingers anymore. <laughs> so this just makes me very happy. Um, this used to be the last tool I wanted to use in my shop. Now it's one of the first tools I wanna to use. It's like, oh, I could cut a piece of paneling on here and it, it doesn't bother me at all, where before it really did make me nervous. So I really love this saw. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get a lifetime's worth of use out of it. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my content, please hit subscribe. Um, I'm gonna be no doing more tool reviews. I also do recipes, um, all sorts of things. So I'm trying to get to a thousand users by the end of the year and I could really use your help. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any opinions on the saw stop, table saw or other tools that you would like to hear about, uh, leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video.